Deb, can you tell me how the rain barrel project came about? Sure. It was actually an email from Connie quite a while back about rain barrels. If I knew anything about them, that she had people interested in them. We had a grant opportunity come through from our um, state office, the Division of Soil and Water Resources, a mini education grant, and for $500. And so I contacted Tammy because I knew there was interest through Master Gardeners. And Carrie had talked to me before about rain barrels also. So I contacted all three of these individuals with um, Carrie, Carrie at Clary, say that correctly, Tammy <laughs> with Master Gardeners, and then Connie at Roscoe Village. And we wrote, we got together figured out how we could do it, we wrote a mini grant so we could have um, help supply rain barrels for people in our community. We're going to have two workshops, one on March 25th from 2 to 4. We've got 15 seats with four still available. We can offer the rain barrels for $50, which is about $50 cheaper than you can get them um, like from a retailer. And then we also were able to write grant funds to place one at the County Services Building where Tammy and I's office is, here at Clary Garden, and then one at Roscoe Village also. What is a rain barrel? A rain barrel is any type of apparatus, in, this, in our case a plastic uh, barrel, 60 gallon barrel, that is designed to hold rooftop runoff, um, like when it rains, the water comes into the barrel and then you can store it to water your plants with. What are the benefits of the rain barrel? Oh, there's several benefits. Um, it's a cost-effective al alternative to using tap water for people that live in the city and have to pay for their water. Um, you can store the water naturally from the rain and then use that to water almost all year round. Um, you can use them at all different types of sites. This is ours, but they come in all shapes and sizes. Um, it's inexpensive to install and maintain, and you can get um, a, a lot of water, about 935 gallons of water from just one inch of rain coming off of a 1,500 square foot house. So that's about thir 13 bathtubs worth. So that's a lot of water that you are saving and being able to utilize. Yeah, how do we put such an apparatus together for the rain barrel? What kind of products do you need? Well, the rain barrel that you get for the first workshop comes pre-plumbed. Um, the second workshop would be unplumbed, so we'd actually be teaching you how to put all the fittings together. But we're happy today because we have all of our fittings here. Um, it actually didn't take very long at all to set up. Uh, the most important thing is your site selection. Where do you want to put your rain barrel? Obviously you need um, a downspout or something that you can, some way you can collect water from a higher location and put into your rain barrel. So we've chosen this area because of the downspout. It's also in the shade a bit. Um, it doesn't have to be in the shade, but it just helps as far as keeping down on any algae that might grow. Um, and also we put lots of containers here in this part of Clary Gardens. So this, is, this will help us actually water the containers without using the city water, which is what we typically use. So um, you can elevate your rain barrel we just put a concrete slab here and um, some cedar as well. It, you need to definitely make sure your rain barrel is level. Elevating it really um, helps just provide access to the spigot. Um, just pulls it off the ground a little bit so you can get the hose on there easier and attach it. Because what happens is the water comes in um, and you get the water out of the bottom of the barrel and then as your barrel fills up you have an overflow here. The water's going to have to go somewhere. So in your site selection, you should probably think about where do you want your runoff to, to go to? Do you have a place for it to drain? So especially if it's near a house, you want to make sure that the water is draining away from the house. So we're lucky here because we already have a, a built-in place where the water goes um, from the downspout. So we're going to set it up here. Yeah. Okay, and let me know if I'm connecting this wrong. You want to do this, Matt? All right. <laughs> this is Matt, uh, part of our grounds crew here at Clary Gardens, and they put this together fairly quickly with just a few extra pieces from the hardware store. Yeah, we just simply uh, tied into the downspout here, and we had to get some uh, 45 degree angles here just to get it angled right over where we wanted it.
with that. Put that into there. We've got another piece down here for the overflow. And uh, like you see, we just have the missing piece here that we just spliced in for the downspout. And then this will all connect. And we got it like that and uh, wait for it to fill up with water and connect our hose and be good to go. Yeah. Um, the other important thing is these rain barrels are white so we would recommend um, spraying them with a Krylon Fusion spray paint. Um, it's one of the only things on the market that will actually adhere to plastic. So by doing that you want to create a darker color um, to help block out any of sunlight from coming in to keep the algae from growing. So we will be painting this with the Krylon Fusion soon. And then another thing you can do to hide any of this, this stuff if you want to elevate it is to um, plant containers down around the base of your rain barrel and you already have your water source right there so you're not adding really any more work or difficulty and you can decorate your rain barrel in any ways and put artwork on it, whatever you want to do. And I think that's pretty much it for rain barrels. Yeah, one thing I meant to add was uh, we did want to do a joint compound, PVC compound on the fittings. We just didn't do it for this, the display, but that's what we're going to do here once we're all done and finished with it. You have what that looks like there? It comes in a little... Yeah, we got the... Uh, the primary in the PVC compound here, which we'll be uh, using that later when we do the final assembly on it. Uh, as fall approaches and you start getting your uh, tools and whatnot put away, you'll also want to do some winterizing on the rain barrel. Uh, similar to anything container that you would have outside, if it gets filled with water, it freezes, it will crack and the same will happen with the rain barrel. So to winterize it, basically you want to just dissemble it, um, empty any water out. You can either turn it upside down and cover it for the winter, or you can take it into a garage or a basement if you have a place you can store it. And then always hook up uh, your downspout again so that you do have water draining down into your, uh, your spout system. Um, and as Carrie mentioned, there are several different ways that you can camouflage your rain barrel. And one of them is using lattice work. If you want to just kind of hide it, you can use some picket fencing. Um, again, you can use some spray paint, and as she mentioned, the Krylon spray paint that has the fusion, uh, because you do want to have a darker cover on your rain barrel. One of the problems that you might get with a rain barrel is having algae grow and having slime form on the inside, and a white barrel is going to promote that, especially if it's sitting out in the sun. Uh, so as Carrie mentioned having it in the shade here, also painting it a darker color would also help to prevent any uh, algae uh, from growing and creating some slime. So once, uh, once you get this going, you're using it, don't forget to do something at the end of the season, you need to winterize it.